So a question I get asked a lot by amateurs and, and, and other fighters that come in, whether they're white collar fighters, uh, amateurs, even sometimes I see pros doing it, is about turning the front foot on the jab. That front foot should not turn on the jab. Um, there's a few reasons why. One, because your base is your most important aspect of boxing. Yeah? If you've got a solid base, you've got solid foundations. As soon as you break your base, uh, then you're going to put yourself in a vulnerable position, both defensively and offensively. So if you watch here now, if I throw, as I throw my jab, if I turn my foot now, now that's just saying that the, the fight is in front of me. Now if I have to advance, I'm going to have to bring that foot back and then come again. Whereas if I turn the hip, bam, bam, all I'm doing is stepping into the shot. And I'm still in a good position. My base hasn't changed, my base is still solid, yeah? If I turn my foot there for a split second, I'm shifting my weight over this way as well a little bit more. I can become a little bit more off balance than if I'm here, um, just turning that hip down, yeah? Also, again, your hip is your the important aspect here because you're creating torque with that hip. But if I turn that hip bam as I throw my jab, now naturally it's like an elastic band. You pull the elastic band, it wants to ping back. If I'm if I pull my hip that way towards my opponent, one I'm giving myself more reach than just here, yeah, bam. And I'm taking myself further away. Yeah, I'm taking myself a little further away. But I'm also allowing this motion of an elastic band. Pull in there, so now when I when I release my hip to come back with my backhand, it's gonna have more power in it. Bam, bam. Yeah, and that's that whip we talk about. Yeah, you look at like people like Tommy Hearns and stuff, they create a lot of leverage and a lot of whip in their hips. Yeah? So but by doing that, if I did that here, then I don't feel like I'm going to get the same power on my backhand because I'm also having to then drop my heel back. But main, the main thing is when, if I do this here, now I have to bring it back to advance and I don't want to be doing that. I want to have a smooth transition, yeah? I want to be back, 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 stepping in. If I'm here, 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 it's not... It's not a good look. And also, again, as I say, it's hindering your base and it's also hindering that hip um, rotation, yeah? So you're just, you're, coming, you're losing the tension in the hip if you turn your foot on the jab. Okay, so that's, there's a little brief insight in why you should be turning that hip. Give it a go on the bag, um, sorry, turning the foot. Turn the hip to the shot. So a lot of, a lot of fighters will just do this. Foot, foot, foot. I'm not really using that hip on the jab, they don't think that they need to use the hip on the jab, but if you, if you try it on the bag, use it on the bag, bam, bam, and on the pads, then see you'll get that extra little snap in the punch um, on your jab, and you'll also get that little bit more range, okay, and sometimes that can be the difference, remember boxing's a game of inches, yeah, if you've got a fighter that's similar height to you, similar reach, sometimes it's them little fine details that will make all the difference, so give it a go on the bags, give it a go on the pads, then try it out in sparring as well and see how you get on with it.